Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Radian here at the National Press Club in Washington, D.C., where we're talking to former Iranian ambassador and uh, visiting scholar now at Princeton University, Said Hussein Musavian, uh, who is also part of uh, Tehran's nuclear negotiating teams, but you live in the United States now. Uh, Sir, uh, tensions are rising in the Middle East between Iran and all of those, many of the Sunni states. You explained uh, here at an event that um, what Iran is doing is responding to support from governments in the region, whether it's from Syria, whether it's from, from uh, Baghdad. Talk to us a little bit, though, about what are some things that Tehran ought to be doing differently uh, while still trying to support Shia communities across the region, but also to de-escalate the situation. Actually, uh, it is not really a true story if you say Iran is only supporting uh, Shia. Uh, with Armenia, Iranian relation with Armenia is better than Iranian relation with Azerbaijan, while 95% of Azerbaijan, country of Azerbaijan, they are Shia. Kurdistan of Iraq it was totally Sunni. No Shia. Majority, overwhelming majority was Sunni. When they asked Iran, please to come to help, Iran helped Kurdistan of Iraq. And as I said in the panel, Barazani said without Iranian help, Erbil would have collapsed. Kirkuk, Mosul, they were Sunnis. Iran was helping the, uh, the, the uh, freedom of Sunnis from uh, occupation of ISIS. Therefore, for Iran, really, the, the issue is not either Shia or Sunni or Christian or Armenians. For Iran, is the principle is to fight, first of all, terrorism. Second, to prevent the dominance of the very dangerous ideology of Wahhabism. Because when you look at these terrorist group, ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Boko Haram, Ahrar al-Sham, all of them, the, their ideology is Wahhabism. And that's, you can understand, Wahhabism has produced too many very, very dangerous terrorist groups. And they were going to capture Syria and Iraq, and Iran resisted. This has nothing to do with Sunni, because 95, 97% of Sunnis are not Wahhabis. They, many, many Sunnis, they hate Wahhabis. This is, this is a, a very important point. However, in this region, we have too many crises. What we need to understand or to learn or to agree that the war is not solution. Second, like the nuclear deal, diplomacy really can work much, much better than war. Second, we need some principles to agree for every crisis in the region. We cannot uh, have discriminative policies. In Bahrain, the U.S. is supporting the minority against 80% of majority Shia. And then it says, you know, Alawites in Syria, they are minority, and majority, they are Sunnis. What is the U.S. policy? Supporting the will of majority? Perfect. It should work the same for Bahrain. I believe we need to agree on principles and then implement the principles without this discrimination everywhere. The principles could be the will of majority. It doesn't matter this is Afghanistan or Iraq or Syria or Yemen or Bahrain. We should stick to the principles. Second, the rights for minorities, wherever they are. Third, all these countries, we need power sharing. Even if you have a Sunni Pashtun majority in Afghanistan, you need to have Shia Tajik in, in the government. If you have Alawites in Syria, you need to have Sunnis. If you have uh, in Yemen Sunnis, you need to have Houthis. Power sharing system, the rights for minorities, the will of majority, a free election supervised by United Nations. Fight terrorism really without any uh, discrimination. We don't have good and bad terrorism. Um, I know your time is short. Let me ask you two questions. How do you respond to those who look at Tehran as an exporter of terrorism uh, since the revolution? Every problem and differences between Iran and the US, Iran and the West, 
on terrorism issue relates to Israeli. I mean, those Israeli groups opposing Israel, Israel occupation of Palestinian land, they are supported by Iran. And like Hezbollah, like Hamas, they are considered by the US terrorists. This is the core differences on terrorism. Otherwise, Iran, the West, Iran and the US, Iran and the world, they are in the same boat fighting ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Taliban, Jabhat al-Nusra, all these terrorist groups. Therefore, we have two different issues about terrorism. The terrorism which the United Nations Security Council says is threat number one to world peace, security, stability is ISIS al-Qaeda. Iran here is the leading force. And nobody can, 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 can deny the role of constructive role of Iran, helping Iraq, Syria, and fighting these groups on the ground. And the US is, is on the air, Russia is on the air. The difference is about those militant groups who are fighting for, against Israel for the occupation of Palestinian lands. Iranians, they are supporting. They say publicly, it is not confidential. They publicly say we would support Hamas, we would support Hezbollah, and we are against the occupation of Palestinian lands. This is the core issue, point, differences between Iran, the US, Iran, and the West on terrorism. So the, the, the issue that you're saying is that Hamas and Hezbollah are, well, from your standpoint, fighting Israel, but are not terror groups. Iranians, they believe those freedom movements who are fighting to gain, to regain their land, their country, their homes, they are not terrorists. The occupiers are terrorists. This is the definition of Iranians. The US doesn't care, you know. The US says, if settlers are there, perfect. If uh, nobody can fight Israel, occupation, yes, we don't like occupation, but that's fine, Let, let's, you know. This is big difference between Iran and the US. Uh, two questions, one on uh, Saudi Arabia. Do you think that Prince Salman's reforms to make Wahhabism less militant, to make it more moderate, is going to have a change in the region and I in hope, the fight against ISIS? I personally hope we should help him. I mean, if he's going to bring reforms for more, more open society in, in, in uh, uh, um, uh, Saudi Arabia, if uh, down uh, the Wahhabism, this is perfect. But I'm afraid revolution from up to down won't work. Last question on the Iran nuclear deal. There are people in Washington and in the Congress who are saying that Iran is violating and the deal should ultimately be broken. What's your counter view to that? They, their argument is totally baseless. The criteria, the rule, the regulation is the uh, International Atomic Energy Agency who is responsible for monitoring the deal nine times since, since the deal has been signed. They have confirmed Iran has fully, completely complied with the deal. There is no dispute. Even yesterday, Secretary uh, Tillerson said Iran has implemented the deal. European, they say, Russian, they say, every country in the world, they say. Israel is another issue. Sir, thanks very Thank much. You.